Hello everyone, my name is Steve from Qualifier Farms. In this episode, I will be explaining to you all about the importance of integrated pest management, also known as IPM. IPM is a strategy that puts a premium on monitoring and prevention over chemical interventions. Here I'm spraying an organic pest spray on the exterior of the grow to help prevent pests from getting close to the exterior garden walls. IPM is crucial because this strategy will help assure your patients are getting the best quality medicine that's free of pesticides, pests, or diseases. So let's jump in and discuss the six steps of IPM. Six steps I suggest for IPM is inspection, preventative action, identification of dangerous pests, analysis, treatment selection, and monitoring. So let's start with step one, inspection. During this step, you will want to make sure your grow space is fully sealed. This is important because it's keen to having a dialed environment for your plants for consistency. If your environment within your grow is inconsistent, you bring in chances of powdery mildews, spider mites, bud rot, aphids, along with unhappy plants, etc. If this part of the process isn't taken seriously, you increase the chances of you failing lab tests and having an unsuccessful harvest. So make sure you have a dedicated mini split AC unit for each room, a dehumidifier that is big enough to control your room, the right amount of space for your lights and trays, and the right filters to recycle air in and out of your room. This will give your plants the right amount of room for them to have a happy cycle. Growing takes time and energy and your plants need love. So try your very best not to neglect this section of IPM. With the right environment for your plants equals happy plants and happy plants means a happy harvest. You get out what you put in. Once you have determined your room is fully sealed and the room can maintain a solid environment, then it's time for step two. This step consists of cleaning, plugging up points of access, and using preventative products such as extra fans for air circulation, which can help prevent funguses, bugs, and pests. The reason being is because they want to lay their eggs, but the airflow makes it extremely difficult to build a nest. Airflow also lowers the humidity and prevents stagnant air. A quality dehumidifier like the USA Made Quest 225 is one of the most energy efficient and flexible units on the market, and it will help dial in your environment in a timely manner. Whereas having stagnant air will promote fungus buildup, and this is definitely a problem you don't want to encounter. Maintaining a clean grow room is important because pests thrive on rooms that are dirty. If you have a spill on the ground, clean it up with a clean towel or a clean mop. Don't try to reuse a dirty towel or a dirty mop because you're promoting pests to enter your garden. Once you feel your grow is clean, then it's time to get familiar with identifying the enemies you want to avoid in your rooms, such as powdery mildew, downy mildew, mold, spider mites, aphids, white flies, broad mites, russet mites, and fungus gnats. So for example, you have a fungus gnat infestation. The next step would be to determine the level of intervention and is this a problem, or will it become one in the near future? In determining if this is a problem or will become a problem, you have to take into account if the quality of the crop will be jeopardized and affect the integrity of the plants. Once a problem arises, there are treatment options that can help alleviate the problem. For example, sticky fly traps, preventative sprays like natural soaps and essential oils, beneficial insects like ladybugs and nematodes, and as we mentioned before, making sure your environment is dialed in. The absolute worst case scenario would be to spray your plants with a wettable sulfur or have to use a sulfur burner. But this would be the ultimate worst case scenario. We don't recommend doing this if you're past week four of flowering. If the problem occurs after week four of flowering, we'd recommend chopping down your plants and starting over. The last step for IPM that I would suggest is monitoring for new or reoccurring problems. This consists of making sure you're taking full ownership of steps one through five and learning from your past mistakes. Growing is fun and requires love. Make sure to hit the subscribe button below and we will see you on our next episode on germination and propagation. This is Steve checking out. Peace and happy growing.